Hello my lovelies, welcome to Erica's Magical Projects. I'm Erica and I'm trying to bring a little bit more magic into my life every week and this week I'm coming out and about to see if I can find anything to make some hedgerow jelly with. come here today to a local orchard that's available to the public to come and pick apples. They're growing here for everybody. Some of them are eating apples and some of them are cooking apples. I'm going to fill up my basket, take them home and make some lovely jelly with them. I think that's enough now, time to look for some more fruit. It's a bit of a funny time in the hedgerows, there's not many black blackberries but there's lots of these red ones. I'm a bit late for the first lot and a bit early for the second I think. Well let's see if I can find some. Well, yesterday's foraging didn't really go very well, so I've come back out today on my bike, da, 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 and I'm going to have another look for some blackberries. I'm sure there must be some blackberries around, at least like a handful or two just to put in my jelly to give it a bit of a red colour. Okay, so here I am, out in the countryside, looking for blackberries again. <laughs> Wish me luck. Ah, look what I just found. Rose hips. This is fantastic. This will give absolutely loads of vitamin C to my jelly. Right, I'm gonna have a few of those. Look where I am, it's absolutely gorgeous. And right by the river, tons of fruit, lovely. Aha, here we are, a few of the last blackberries. I think there are definitely enough for me to take some. Oh, just a few last ones. Anybody with a vegan or vegetarian inclination can eat fruit with impunity because the plant really wants you to eat it. It's the gift from the plant. Please spread our little seeds. some elderberries. I think I'll have some of those as well. Well that's a good sign of a day's picking. Ah look at that all red. Time to head home because I've got two tubs of blackberries, one of elderberries and a big basket of apples so it's time to go home and make that jelly. Hooray! I'm back in the kitchen. Over the last two days, I've managed to gather quite a lot of fruit from the hedgerows. This huge basket of apples, these are the blackberries I found yesterday. They're a bit squishy now, but I'll still chuck them in. Then these two lovely tubs of blackberries from the hedgerow this morning by the river. A lovely tub of rose hips. These are wild rose hips. And some elderberries. I'm so excited. I've actually got quite a lot of fruit in here now. So the first thing to do is to wash the fruit. I've got so many lovely apples that I'm going to make this jelly out of the most gnarly looking ones. Like look at that, one's a bit gnarly. 
these little funny little ones and any ones that I've kind of bitten into and have tasted that they're quite sour I'm going to use those ones for the jelly oh, look, there you go on there. come on out little apple hey <laughs> they're joining their fellows over here and now I'm going to chop these up and I'm not going to core them or peel them I'm just going to leave all the pips and stuff in because we're going to filter those out in the next stage after we've given them a good old boil. Over here I have the other fruit already. This has been washed and it's beautiful. Look at the colours. The seeds and the cores are a really important part of the process because, ooh, look at that. The beautiful colours all mixing together. I'm not going to put any other setting agent in. It's just going to be pectin from the apples. I think I've got enough there to start my hedgerow jelly going. Now I need a big pan. This part of the process is to extract the juices from the fruits. Mm, look at that, now I'm going to give it a little smash. This amazing thing is a jelly strainer. Da -da -la, jelly strainer. Now I'm going to measure this and for every litre of liquid I'm going to add a kilogram of sugar then I'm going to boil it up for about half an hour until it's at the right temperature. These are my two jars of jelly. I have no idea if they're going to set, but that jammy jammy bit on the side looks like it's setting. I've got no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to come back tomorrow and uh, we'll see. It's the next day and I let the jelly set overnight. And let me show you how successful it's been. Colour! Oh my goodness, it's so dark and red. And can you see? It's jelly! It's jelly. It has set. Oh, so now I have to taste it. This jelly is so versatile, you can eat it as a savoury or a sweet treat. Now I'm going to try it on a cracker on its own, just to taste the fruits. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously it's very sweet and jammy and mm, fruity. Oh, it's so fruity. Mmm. So you've got the Obviously the sweet jammy hit there, it's got like a strawberry flavour, I don't know where that's come from. I think that might be the rose hips with the very high, high citrusy note in there, because they're packed full of vitamin C. If you'd have told me this was strawberry jam, I would have believed you. Right now, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it with a savoury option. Here I've got a little bit of cave aged blue cheese. I think the combination of a really, really high fruity flavour goes absolutely fantastically with that crazy flavour that you get with a really good rich blue cheese, really stinky cheese, let me see. Mmm, that's good. That's, that's better than just on its own. Mmm, now it's got the quality of a red currant jelly, but it's got a much deeper, deeper richness to it. Wow, that's amazing. From that pot of fruit, I made a little, a little jam jar and a big daddy jam jar. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to put that into the kitchen. I'm going to let my family help themselves to it. And then I'm going to keep this one for Christmas. My hands are so sticky. My kitchen is so red, but I do have some hedgerow jelly. <laughs> So join me in the next video where I'll be exploring the joy of ponchos once more. The last poncho I made was made out of hand spun yarn and took ages and ages and ages. I used a really nice pattern and all the way through the pattern I was thinking to myself what would this look like in a DK yarn and so here's the yarn and that's what I'm going to be doing in the next video. I hope you'll join me but until then remember everything handmade is magical.